In this video, you're going to learn how to titrate. Before watching this video, make sure that you've seen the meniscus and burette videos. Volumetric titrations are used in chemistry to determine the concentration of an analyte solution. To do this, you use a solution of a known concentration and react it with a known volume of your analyte. You do this until you reach the endpoint. This is when all of the analyte is assumed to have reacted. The endpoint of a reaction can be indicated using several different methods, such as color change by indicator or change in pH by a pH meter. Because it's the simplest to demonstrate and most common, I'll be showing you color change by an indicator. I'll be using phenolphthalein. The first thing to do is to make sure you have everything set up and ready to go. You should have your burette already cleaned three times with the ionized water and three times with your solution of a known concentration and set up properly in the retort stand. You'll now want to lower it to eye level so that you can add your solution. Make sure your stopcock is closed, and then with a cleaned funnel, add your solution to the burette. The solution held in the burette is referred to as the titrant. Make sure you add enough solution so that you won't run out midway through the titration. With the burette back in its proper position, place the waste beaker under the tip and allow a small amount of solution to drain. This prevents the formation of bubbles. Once you've done this, remove the waste beaker and place a blank white paper underneath the burette tip. This will be used as a blank background to see the color change more easily. Next, you'll want to transfer an accurate volume of your analyte into your receiving vessel. The best way to do this is using a clean pipette. This will allow you to transfer a very precise volume, which you'll need to know in order to do your calculations at the end of the titration. Use the pipetting skills shown to you in the pipetting video. Then transfer your solution into your receiving vessel. In most titrations, Erlenmeyer flasks are used. This is because they prevent solution from splashing back out of the flask. You'll also want to make sure that you're using a flask of an adequate volume. You don't want it to be too small that solution will splash out while you're swirling it. You'll now need to add some of your indicator. As I said earlier, I'm using phenolphthalein. This means that the solution will turn pink when the endpoint is reached. You'll only need a few drops. You'll want to give your solution a quick swirl to make sure it's mixed, and then place it under the burette. Make sure that there's enough room to swirl the flask without it bashing into the tip of the burette, but you still want the tip to be below the rim so that you don't lose any of your solution. Initially, you can add large amounts of titrant but as you get closer to the end point, you'll want to slow down. It'll be difficult to judge the first time around, but you'll be able to do it better with practice. A good indicator that you're nearing your end point is when there's initial color change, but it fades quickly with swirling. As you get even closer to your end point, it will take longer and longer for the color to fade. When you get to this point, you'll have to reduce your aliquot size to dropwise or even half dropwise. Making half drop additions takes a lot of practice. What you need to do is first let a small amount of titrant out of the burette, but only enough so that the drop hangs on the tip and doesn't drop down into your solution. Then touch the drop to the side of your receiving flask and wash the droplet down with your deionized water. Make sure as you get even closer to your endpoint to rinse down the sides of your flask with deionized water. This helps to get all of the unre unreacted titrant into the bottom of the flask. Doing this won't affect your results, but it'll dilute the, solu the solution, so make sure not to add too much or it'll make the color change harder to see. When the endpoint is reached, the color is persistent but faint. It may be difficult to notice, but that's what using the white paper helps you to see. The endpoint is marked when the color remains visible for at least 20 to 30 seconds. Different indicators will give you different results in different transitions. Some will be very sharp and some will be very gradual, and they'll use a variety of different colors. So make sure you know what you're looking for before you start. 
After you've reached your endpoint, make sure to let the viewer at rest for a few seconds and then record the final volume. Using the initial and final volume in your burette, you'll get the volume of transferred solution into the reaction. Using this and the reaction stoichiometry, you'll be able to determine the concentration of your analyte solution. When performing a titration, it's common to use at least three different aliquots of your analyte. This helps you to get reproducibility in your results. It's also common for students to overshoot the endpoints, so this helps you to get some more practice in. When you've finished all of your titrations, make sure to clean your burette just as shown to you in the burette video and store it upside down for later use. Volumetric titrations are very daunting to new students to chemistry, but with a lot of practice, you'll eventually get the hang of it.